Fedora 38 is here and this will be the most comprehensive video. We are not just going to talk about GNOME on bare metal but also the new spins of Fedora and most importantly take a look into Fedora's new kernel. All of these under 12 minutes. Okay, let us now begin with the core of Fedora 38. It is the kernel 6.2.9 which enables hardware support for Intel Arc series. Also, it is the first version of the Linux kernel to offer mainline support for the Apple M1 Pro, Macs and Ultra chips. It also includes some updates for NTFS drivers with a new hide dot file mount option which makes files starting with a dot created on Linux hidden on Windows too. You will be able to see the file if only show hidden files option is enabled in Windows, else they are invisible. The no case case-sensitive mount option is another new feature that allows folders and files to be accessed without regard to the case of the letters in their name. This means that a file named example.ext with a capital E and another file named with a small e would be treated as the same file. The Windows name mount option is a third new feature that helps ensure that files and folder names are compliant with Windows naming rules. This means that files and folders with names that are not allowed in Windows will not be created or stored and it is enabled by default. Like in this case, I cannot create the file name con on NTFS inside Linux while I can create the same inside X4 file system. Next comes support for Intel's on-demand driver in 4th gen Xeon CPUs. Older Intel Skylake CPUs gain some performance through call depth tracking, a cheap and less resource intensive way to fix a vulnerability. Here are some other notable features of the latest kernel. We have the obvious new features of GNOME 44 added to Fedora, but there is a catch. Keep watching to know more. Major changes are there in Control Center. As we know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and more show two lines of text when connected to a device, managing to show more information at the same time. Running background activities are now shown as a separate drop-down list, giving you more control. A basic feature which was absent natively is now present. On the upper part, get access to the redesigned screen capture utility, which enables you to screen grab and screen record too. I have noticed something in Nautilus. I was stupid enough to rename a file while I was removing it and the operation was not yet completed. And not only did the move action fail, which was which is obvious, but also the original source file got deleted, hence I had to record again. While the error handling might work for copying files, it turns out to be fatal for moving a file, especially when the file is important. Other than that, Nautilus File Manager has been upgraded to version 44. Alongside the larger number of grid view size, inside preferences, you now have the choice to navigate your files through tree view. Turning that option makes your directories look like a drop down menu to show the files. If you have folders inside your directory, it will take the shape of a nested drop down menu. Middle click on a folder opens it on a separate tab. Right clicking on the tab shows a number of options. Dragging on the tab separates it to a new window. Middle clicking on the tab again closes it. File picker has a major revamp whereby grid view is added enabling it to show thumbnails. Settings pages are getting an overhaul. You have the option to share Wi-Fi password by scanning the QR code. I had some problems connecting to my Wi-Fi but then after finally connecting it showed a separate Wi-Fi name. Arc Nations 2.4 space 1 and I'm pretty sure that I only have one Wi-Fi. Anyway, many of the pages inside settings have added videos and animations to show what changes are taking place. Just like in this case of mouse and touchpad, placing your mouse on the options play the animation. There is a new toggle for mouse acceleration and GNOME developers are including an I button to show what a particular option is meant for. Along with that, you also get a testing area to see how your mouse responds to, to the changes. So you can scroll and see the reduction and also check how the click speed is there for single and double click. Just like the testing area for cursor under typing area of accessibility. Well, talking about accessibility, it is now subdivided into seeing, hearing, typing and more, which have their own options. Under Seeing section, you get the option to hide the scroll bars or make them visible. This option however caused a little trouble and the setting app crashed. Well, it was only one time. Another thing which I noted was that the OBS screen was also frozen. 
um, hence some of my recording files got damaged demanding a repeated recording mm, so might be related to some graphical issues additional settings like volume amplification is also available talking about sound there are some other changes under the same category sound test window has been redesigned especially when you have a lot of output options providing a more attractive user interface you also get the option to change your alert sound to none which is practically muting them other options for alert sounds are still available if you ever need to change my experience with fedora had been very buttery and smooth i mean if you look at the software experience, opening and closing of applications and animations lately with GNOME, it is so smooth, it is so snappy. But the new GNOME 44 software, which is supposed to be faster and smoother, uh, but this software app behaves otherwise. Some app pages will open instantly but while others would take time to load. Opening predefined app groups under the home section kind of fails to load since I don't get any loading sign. They do load up but after a long long time. Trust me, my internet connection is fast. I even tested it out on the budgie version uh, but software consistently performs poorly for some reason even across multiple boots on GNOME. Might be I am doing something wrong, please do let me know down in comments. Anyway, back to GNOME. After some initial loading, most of the pages of software category load faster so you can browse without interruption. But uh, remember to give it some time after the first use uh, to get the performance you expect. I might be doing something wrong here, uh, so I don't know. Performance also depends on network connectivity and other factors. GNOME software now saves disk space by removing unnecessary flatback runtimes and has better updates with progress info and description. While softwares from the past in Linux as much as I remember were of minimal size, certain software nowadays do take up a lot of storage, at least to accomplish installation, as we know with modern package managers like Flatpak. So the live version space can slightly be increased to provide more space to breathe. Budgie has uh, over 2 GB of space in life, while Workstation marginally hits 2 GBs. Have you noticed that with cumulative updates, now every app is optimized for smaller screens? And I love it. I find something weird in Fedora, you don't have minimize and maximize buttons enabled by default, I have no idea why. I mean at least for newcomers to Linux, won't be having any idea while it can just be fixed from G settings from terminal. GDK3 loop versus libadvita GDK4 loop continues. I have no idea why GNOME console is not the default terminal when text editor has already replaced gedit. You can install GNOME console and enjoy some of the new features like tabbed layout which also has an overview mode. I am guessing the next update on GNOME 44 would include an overview mode even in text editor, Nautilus and more. Anyway, Budgie and i3 are the new spins of Fedora. What I'm more impressed with is i3. But let us first cover Budgie. You get the traditional Windows 10 like desktop components, layout, themed with Fedora. I mean, it is easier for people coming from Windows 10. It has some extra software included like Budgie desktop settings, which enables you to change the theme and also take a look into the current set theme. The GNOME counterpart tweaks app could have been pre-installed in GNOME for more consistency, but clearly Fedora is more interested to serve in different tastes rather than making them look all the same. You can clearly see it in the choice of icons, themes when compared with the original GNOME workstation. What's interesting on desktop is Raven. It's a widget and notification holder on its own which can be easily customized from the body desktop settings. You can add, remove and reposition widgets directly from here. You can also determine the position of Raven too. For example, you can move it to the left, right or you can choose automatic. Budgie also comes with its own set of wallpapers. You can find them under background inside settings. Talking about settings, we have the very familiar GNOME settings. It does not match the latest version, but yeah, the, all the features are available but at slightly different places. You also get the familiar screenshot tool, no screen recording. Then we have GNOME software for software installation, which pretty much again gives the same experience i3 spin of Fedora is the most recommended from my side. I mean, it just flies. You get to install Fedora with the bare essentials. I mean, for me, the resolution inside the VM wasn't quite right, so I had to change it manually. 
and I did not have to do it with the workstation and the budgie. But other than that, i3 on Fedora is a breezy experience. You won't get any animation or the fancy stuff, but it just works. First, it might feel alien if you're switching from a desktop environment. You can open the terminal with your set mod keys. Now for my case, it is Alt. So Alt plus Enter opens the terminal. You can reposition each window from the keyboard, launch apps using D menu, which is mod plus D. The default web browser is obviously again Firefox, which I use to download a nice wallpaper. File management, you get Thuna, a lightweight, customizable file manager. The same thing that you get with XFC. You can browse very fast and seamlessly here. You might be tempted to apply wallpaper from the file manager, but it does not work by default. So you get a separate wallpaper selector called Azote. Now you also have Fe, which can also be used for setting wallpaper, but Azote can be used again because it is given on their website. Just open Azote from D menu and add the directory where you have to save the wallpaper or where you have your saved wallpaper. Now choose the fit for your screen and hit apply. Due to an absence of preview, I did have to rummage a little bit, but then it was fine. You might first experience some problem with the keyboard first interface. If you're not a power user, then uh, there is a complete list of the basic i3 hotkeys on online. I am also putting the link in the description, but once it gets into your muscle memory, you can fly through your daily workload. For power users out there, you already know how awesome it is. Uh, now, if you want to theme your desktop according to some of the theming videos, I do have some i3 window manager theming videos too, so you can check them out definitely. For the installed default applications of i3 Fedora, you can check their official website for the list. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. Try to support me on Patreon if you can. That will help me pay for college. I'm pursuing multimedia to bring better and high quality content to you guys. Also unlock additional perks on supporting. Link in description. That's all. I'll catch you in the next one.